přišlo to náhle a nečekaně. Svět se právě začínal probouzet s netušenými perspektivami do nového tisíciletí, když jim otřásla vlna ničivých živelných pohr. Desítky metrů vysoké vlny byčují pobřeží a devastují nechráněná města. Strašná zemětřesení a bouřky dokonávají dílo zkázy. Apokalypsa začíná ohlašovat svůj příchod. A potom najednou svět zaplavily hordy. Zemí se šíří vlny paniky a děsu. Pod přikrývkou neproniknutelné mlhy pospíchají nemilosebné hordy s touhou po krvi. Zástupy krvelačných nelidských bestií vedou tajemné černé postavy v pláštích. Jejich blesky používané jako strašná zbraň, pečetí mnohá vítězství a masakrují všechny, kteří se proti nim odváží postavit. Houfy nemrtvých opouštějí svoje hroby a jejich jedinou myšlenkou je zabíjet. Neznámý nepřítel je odhodlaný všechno zničit. Jen postupně a s námahou odhalují státy celého světa jeho pravou identitu. Nájezdníci připomínající zahmotněné příšerné noční můry masakrují obyvatelstvo. Na ztracených územích zůstávají miliony nezvěstných. Nikdo jim jednoduše nedokáže pomoct. Cestu zaplavili sta tisíce utečenců. Většina států je v jednom plameni. Požár války a katastrof hrozí pohltit celý svět. Vojenská situace je nepřehledná. Bojující jen s námahou zachraňují holé životy. Tajemný nepřítel používá přírodní katastrofy jako zbraně. Bouřky, vychřice a záplavy ničí bez milosti každý náznak odporu. Už pouze hrstky statečných odvážlivců si z prohraných území probojovávají cestu peklem zpět ke zbylé civilizaci. A i když vyváznou, nečeká na ně nic dobrého. Světu vládne chaos. Ztráty na životech jsou nevyčíslitelné. Vědomosti o protivníkovi jsou minimální. Po celém světě se tak spontánně rozšířilo lakonické pojmenování soupeře. Od této chvíle je znám pod názvem Druhá strana. Adesáj. První jiskřička naděje zasvětla, když světem proběhla zpráva o vzniku Aliance Země. Začínají se vynořovat první případy, kdy se jednotlivé oddíly úspěšně postavily na odpor neznámým nepřátelům a zakusili pocit vítězství. Začíná čas, kdy ke všemu odhodlaní bojovníci neústupně obracejí svoje zbraně proti hrůzostrašným nepřátelům s rozhodnutím neustoupit ani o krok. Děje se to na celém světě a přicházejí zprávy o úspěších. Zatím je to boj plný zoufalství a zběsilého zabíjení. Příval bez tý nemá konce a je nezastavitelný. Existuje pro nás ještě nějaká naděje? Nastává apokalyptická válka nepředstavitelných rozměrů. Začala poslední bitva světa. Jen málo kdo se to v těchto chvílích odvážil přiznat, ale bylo to nepochybné. Na zem se vrátila magie. Hello everyone, welcome to Spellcross. It's me. And I'm actually gonna just jump straight into the game. And I'm gonna choose uh, the veteran difficulty. The Czech version of the game had three difficulty settings and the game was a little bit different. Just a little bit different. So let's play it on veteran because rookie would be probably boring. Escape. To all units behind enemy lines. This is General Malcolm of the newly formed alliance. Try to fight your way through to unoccupied territory. You will be given as much military support as we can muster. Remember, the Alliance is with you. Good luck. You will need it. 
hit OK. So this is how the game looks and uh, to introduce it a little bit. Spellcross uh, is an old uh, Czech and Slovak game produced by a Slovak company in uh, 1997 I believe. And it was the first game that was distributed to US and uh, it was kind of popular and uh, it was commercially commercially successful first commercial success uh, of the international releases for the Czech gaming industry anyway and uh, it, uh, it basically started the Czech gaming industry that's why I chose it also and it's not a bad game it's a turn-based strategy and it has nice uh, atmosphere as you could see in the the longer check intro with my very bad subtitles uh, the US intro was mu was much shorter and didn't really capture the the atmosphere that they tried to present with the game the idea is that uh, Everything is completely ruined. There's just few people left on the whole planet. And they're trying to organize some kind of resistance and fight back and reclaim the whole planet. And uh, you start off, you have to first finish up this introduction mission. And this little guy here, Captain Alexander, that's actually you. From the point of his view, you're going to be commanding the game uh, in another section, because this is just the one part. Uh, this is like the the battle part uh, when you're placing your units on the map and fighting and playing the game. And there's another view when you manage your resources, buy new units and uh, upgrade and research and plan your attacks and save the game as well. But first you need to get there basically with your guy. You need to get here across the whole map and save yourself before you can start playing the game. So this guy is our main guy, he's pretty strong. Here you can see yeah, the basic layout of the game. The selected unit is here. If I mouse over the enemy units, we can already see them here. They already are attacking us. It pops up on the right side and you see basically the same thing for them. Now, the bar above his head, the blue bar is action points, the green bar is health, and those red uh, small squares uh, are numbers of attack that he, is, he has uh, available for the round. He's quite good, he has four attacks. That's probably also because he's quite a high level unit. The level of the unit is here below the picture, those uh, little badge uh, shapes. So he's on the sixth level, and this is his experience bar. Uh, other than that, we have rangers. It's basically scout unit, and uh, yeah, a little bit more elite than the basic light infantry that we have here. They are the cheapest and also the weakest. And you can see that they are level 1. The rangers are also just level 1. Okay, now the situation here is that uh, as we're moving with uh, this guy uh, to 
this remote uh, place to this base, we will be picking up uh, stranded units uh, that will join us. And it's very important because we can we will keep them afterwards. And buying new units is very expensive here and money is very scarce. And yeah, we'll get into that later. So basically, we don't want to lose anyone and uh, we want to save ev everyone possible uh, that's on the map. Yeah. Okay, I'll start by shooting those orcs and show them to you. This is like the window of information about the units. I don't know anything about them, so otherwise I could read about them. But I will have to research that. And those are the first guys that you meet. Menacing orcs with uh, huge double-edged axes. Now, our units, the basic infantry, this is our hero, with his powerful handgun. These are the rangers, and you can actually read about them. And the units you're getting in this game, they're not just units from like American American army. Uh, you will be getting units from all over the world because you basically just the, the whole the alliance is just uh, collecting everything they can and forming uh, some sort of resistance army. Just cool. Yeah, the Rangers uh, come from uh, USA and Russia, <laughs> Cossacks in Russia and Texas Rangers in the USA. The basic light infantry is not even mentioned where they come from. They're just the basic uh, right soldiers. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shoot at them to get their attention and then I will go to to my other units because it's uh, very important in, in this game to get a high ground it's more difficult for the enemies to climb towards you and at least at the beginning they have no shooting units they have to come to you but it will be so many of them that they will probably get to us and then it's gonna get messy I hurt them a bit I always want to cluster my units. Now you can see that this guy doesn't have any action points. He can't. Uh, he can't attack. These guys can attack, and if I hold the key A, I can see their range, not just visual range, but also range of their guns. Yeah, the light infantry has uh, smaller range. Is not showing anything because it doesn't have action points. If I press M, I can see where can they go in this turn, and this uh, there's a different color of blue, uh, the inner circle, that shows me where I can go uh, to still retain at least one uh, attack. That's quite important, and it also shows uh, here on the on the small text panel. So I can't attack them now, but now they're in the fog, uh, they, they will disappear when I end the turn. And actually since I have some uh, guys with attacks uh, left, it is possible that I could get a counter-attack. That means that when they go out of the fog and see me, well, when I see them, I might automatically attack them with those uh, remaining attacks that otherwise will be wasted in the next round. All right. Yeah. This was the uh, counter-attack. It's quite uh, important because as you can see, we only harmed the first unit down there 
on the panel you can see that 58 of them are healthy they're green 24 are uh, wounded they could potentially heal themselves but uh, they don't really usually do it and the rest of them are dead and uh, level 4 so they're a little bit stronger than me so I'll now try desperately to fight them off that's what I like about this game that right away when you start the game you are in a big trouble and you can see that I'm spending my attacks to just kill off the first guys and those guys are coming and they're probably gonna chop me but they're probably gonna attack the captain and he uh, as you can see here he's only one guy if he gets uh, wounded I can heal him for the whole round but if he is wounded his power here you can see the attack power it's like 15 against uh, infantry 8 against armored units 10 against uh, air units there are air units and uh, I'm not sure if this is his yeah units armor okay but if he gets wounded he still has the same power of the attacks if those guys if the infantry gets wounded half of them get, get wounded they quite they, they get weaker and it goes the same for the enemy units so what I want to do generally if I see that they're going to reach me I want to wound and uh, weaken as much of them as possible and the wolves behind them are very dangerous they're actually more dangerous because they have a lot of action points but they have to go around so they will spend some action points going around so that sort of works to my advantage the captain is quite strong now, I could probably kill them off but I don't want to because if they reach me and attack me while they are weak they will take the space so if there are more units and you're surrounded by the weak ones that are chopping you up but it's just a few guys you won't get hurt that much and the others have to wait or go around or attack another unit that's not as important I'm now not sure if I should attack the wolves or the orcs I will probably attack the wolves they're more squishy they have less armor but they're more dangerous Let's see what happens. Oh, more wolves. Great. At least they are wounded. Yeah. Did you see how they made uh, space for those guys just stepped away so those could attack me? Because otherwise they wouldn't have enough action points to go around and attack. Okay, let's try. I think he got weaker. Yeah, he got weaker. This is not good. This is not good at all. Because now I need to heal him and the other guys. I'm, I'm. I really want to keep this. Those two wolves alive to block others. Those guy guys are now the strongest. Yeah, he still has one shot. Okay. Let's hope he survives this. Oh, cool, they're well attacking like infantry. Okay, and we lost. So this mission failed, and that means that we lost the game. Completely. So, you can see that the game is not really easy. Especially if you choose the harder difficulty. Let's try again. The Alliance has broken down, and the forces of darkness now control the Earth. We tried, but it wasn't enough. We are now
now slaves to our new dark masters. Armageddon 